Well, you played in state honor bands as a teen, playing in prestigious events like the Grammys and the Montreux Jazz Festival. What an opportunity. How did this develop? And please tell us about this experience. Early on in my musical upbringing, I had these great opportunities, like piano competitions uh, were made available. So I was able to dig in and get to a deeper level, I think, of performance and also training, because so much of being a musician is behind the scenes training, practicing, cultivating your art, and even thinking about what is art, what's a note, you know, is a sound, shape, color. How you think of things can be so romantic, it can be, you know, really aggressive. Um, so early on I learned how to express my feelings and emotions in music, and uh, then I also had the traveling aspect like being a part of the Grammy band in high school and also traveling to Montreux, Switzerland for the Jazz Fest in high school really came to show me another part of music that I love which is the travel performance aspect and also the camaraderie between the musicians when you're on the road you just grow into a family and it's beautiful. So when did you switch to the saxophone? Well I still play piano so I never really switched, I just started. <laughs> started on piano when I was four and then sax when I was nine and then the flute, and I played the guitar before the sax. So uh, it's just kind of all one big thing. I think of music as a one big pot, like a melting pot. You can grab voice from it, you can grab a flute, a clarinet, a sax, or whatever. And it's all the same thing. It's like a universal sound. You had a scholarship to the University of Southern California and graduated as the most outstanding jazz student of your class. We know why. Many renowned jazz musicians are on staff at USC. Who did you study with? My favorite instructors at USC were definitely the Clayton brothers. John Clayton, who's a bassist and also a world-class producer. He works with Diana Krall. He does a lot of coaching. And then one of my other favorite teachers from SC is Jeff Clayton. Uh, he was my saxophone instructor, and he's the one that really taught me how to, you know, dig deep inside to grab the music from within your soul and to perform it. Um, you know, he got me really into transcribing, which is when you play music by ear. And, uh, you know, at that point I had all the materials that I needed, like I had the tools to make music, but at that point we, we were polishing and it was more of a conceptual phase. So the Clayton Brothers, we called it Claytonomics, they really showed us what music was about from the soul and the heart. You played with Jessica Simpson, Michael Buble, Burt Bacharach, The Temptations, and you are currently touring with Michael Bolton playing sax and singing backup vocals. Will you continue to do backup work? At this point in my career, yes. I'm really loving the experiences that I'm having. I just got back from a great Eastern European tour with Michael Bolton. We went to Croatia, Italy, Spain, Portugal, Lebanon, and uh, you know, it's an experience that I have this desire to travel the whole world. So I'm almost there. I've been to all the continents except for Africa and Australia and Antarctica. So those are on my list. Maybe once I finish touring all the major cities of the world, I'll be able to settle down more and just chill. <laughs> How did you get the moniker of Jesse J? Well, Jessie's my nickname. It has been since I was a little girl. Uh, my full name is Jessica. And the J came into play when I started working with Paul Brown. He wanted to have a shorter stage name that was easy to remember, fun, and kind of fresh, and you know, easy to Google as well for records. So, um, you know, we, we wrestled with a few different options. But J was the best because it stands for jazz. And, you know, people could say jazzy, 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 jazz, jazzy, jazz. And we just said, okay, Jesse J. So you seem to be working all the time. Do you have a personal life? I do. It's fun. It's funny the way that it works out. A lot of times, my friends and family come on the road to see me. And uh, it turns into a vacation. Like, my parents came to London to visit me. My friends came to Tokyo to hang out. And most recently, my two best friends came with me to San Diego for my CD release party. And then they came again to the Newport Beach CD release party. <laughs> So um, for me, friends and family are really the backbone of, of my support system. Like, I definitely couldn't be where I am without my parents, who have supported me from day one with the piano lessons, the saxophone lessons, you know, vocal coaching, everything, and I actually dedicated my CD to them for showing me what true love is about. Is there a special man in your life, Jesse? No, not at the moment.
<laughs> we saw we first saw you on Catalina Island at the Jazz Track Festival in 2006, which was your first major show as a headline. You have come a long way. What's next? Thank you. You know, there's a lot of things that I would love to do. Um, I have a lot of desires, and the first is really to promote this new CD, True Love, which I think embodies a lot of uh, the feelings that we all share, like passion, romance, um, you know, fantasy, and also just being real with yourself and being connected to it. So I hope to connect to a lot of people around the world with this music. I would love to tour South America, Buenos Aires, Argentina, Brazil, everywhere, Paraguay, Ecuador, and do like a jazz tour of South America and Mexico with the CD. I would also really love to perform more with other artists, like I would love to work with Prince and Sting, and um, I would really, really enjoy to just continue what I'm doing and just maybe expand on it in different areas of the arts as well. Thank you very much, Jesse. You're welcome. Thank you.